right now on 5 on your side at 10. Finally, we saw the sun Monday. Why we don't have to wait an entire week before we see it again. Tax time is here. Tonight, the head of the IRS talks to Five on Your Side about taking the frustration out of filing. Our top story, he's sat on death row for more than 20 years. Now prosecutors have set into motion a chance at freedom. Our system is not perfect. It does convict innocent people. St. Louis County Prosecutor Wesley Bell filed a motion today to overturn the murder conviction of Marcellus Williams. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Mike Bush. Williams was sentenced to death for the 1998 murder of a former St. Louis Post-Dispatch reporter, Felicia Gale, in her University City home. Five on your side's Laura Barcheski has been looking into the filing, and she's live tonight outside Bell's office. Laura. Mike and Kelly, while St. Louis County Prosecutor Wesley Bell was not available for an interview today, court documents from his office explain several reasons why they think Williams might actually be innocent. University City Police say on August 11th, 1998, Dr. Daniel Pikus came home and found his wife, Felicia Gale, stabbed to death in the hallway with one of their kitchen knives still lodged in her neck. Areas of the house were a mess, her purse was missing, and a laptop had been stolen. Felicia, known as Leisha, was a former reporter for the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Her brutal murder shook the whole neighborhood. It made us very uneasy for a long time, and it was just not even the fear so much as the fact that um, we just wanted justice to be done. Marcellus Williams was convicted of her murder in 2001, accused of stabbing her 43 times. There was no reason for this crime. It was extremely brutal and vicious, and that's why he deserves the death penalty, and I believe that's why he is going to get the death penalty. He did, in fact, receive the death penalty and was just hours from being executed in 2017 when then-Governor Eric Greitens granted a stay of execution. You know, he has um, steadfastly uh, you know, uh, stuck to his innocence. Um, and, you know, interestingly enough, I've asked him about getting the execution date and what that felt like, you know, and he would always say, you know, these things are in God's hands. He's a very faithful person. Michelle Smith, an advocate fighting the death penalty, says Williams became a Muslim in prison, taking on the Muslim name Khalifa. She says he pursued every legal avenue to overturn his conviction and with the help of the Midwest Innocence Project and a new 2021 law that allows prosecuting attorneys to file a motion to vacate a conviction, he has a chance. So we definitely have hope that, um, you know, Khalifa will be home, you know, I'm hoping this year. In court documents, St. Louis County Prosecutor Wesley Bell says two big reasons they believe Williams is innocent are DNA evidence on the knife that was never heard in court was examined and is not a match to Williams, and informants in the case were unreliable. Um, Khalifa's case, there were um, witnesses who, uh, what, what we call informants and people who, um, Ultimately, we're not telling the truth, but got some kind of benefit from that. I spoke with one of Gail's family members this afternoon who declined to comment and asked that the public respect their family's privacy during this difficult time. I also talked with some of her former colleagues at the Post-Dispatch who tell me she was a very kind person who was passionate about social justice. Reporting live in Clayton, Laura Barcheski, Five on Your Side. Tomorrow, a man who confessed to killing his ex-girlfriend has a bond reduction hearing in St. Louis County. Trenton Ivey says he killed Markeisha Williams a few days before Christmas. Police arrested him a few days later in Wisconsin. Williams' body was later found in northern Illinois. Ivy is charged with first-degree murder and is being held without bond. A fundraiser was held tonight in Cottleville for the family of two young brothers killed in a house fire in defiance. Six-year-old Jameson Kaiser and his four-year-old brother Julian died January 19th. Funeral services will be held this Thursday. A GoFundMe page has raised more than $161,000 for the family. We have a link in the As Seen on TV section at KSDK.com. Tonight, a crash reconstruction team is investigating a tragic incident in a nail salon involving three best friends. It happened over the weekend at Pacific Hair and Nail Spa. The three women had just finished getting their nails done when one of the women left to pull her car in closer from the rain. Surveillance video shows the SUV backing into the business. 61-year-old Jill Goddard of Pacific and the other friend were paying at the counter. Goddard died from her injuries. Her brother calls it a terrible accident and says the women were her support system. They became the closest of friends and my sister was so excited every day. She's up early in the morning ready to go see her friends and go do something.
The other friend was injured as well as another person in the salon. A GoFundMe has been set up for her children and grandchildren to travel to Missouri for her funeral and for expenses. These details are on KSDK.com in the As Seen on TV section. Tonight, an unexpected road closure is impacting drivers in South St. Louis. Pavement collapsed in the bottom of the I-55 and Bates exit. That's on Michigan Avenue. Five on your side's Andy Crawl spoke with MoDOT about why it could take some time to come up with a fix. Annie. Well, Mike, right now we don't know what caused the pavement to collapse. MoDOT crews are evaluating the situation in South City to try and figure out what needs to be done before the ramp can be safely reopened. But it won't be anytime soon. MoDOT and city street crews investigating what happened on Monday, causing pavement to collapse at the bottom of the Bates ramp off I-55. Usually has to do with historic um, utility lines, something like that, that might be washed out or a hole in something. So we have to bring really everybody to the field to take a look and see what's going on. The MoDOT maintenance team found a sinkhole on the ramp Monday morning in the left lane, a potentially big problem, so they closed the ramp completely. MoDOT says it's not sure how extensive the damage is or how much repairs may cost. Officials are hoping for a quick turnaround as crews analyze what utility lines are involved. In this case, that has not been determined to be an MSD issue yet, um, so we're still trying to figure out whose it is and who can help us with the fix. We reached out to St. Louis Metropolitan Sewer District. Officials tell us they were called. However, this spot is not part of MSD's infrastructure. The shutdown is adding pressure on traffic flow in the area. As a construction project on I-55 is keeping multiple lanes closed already around the clock. This isn't uh, necessarily something that, come, that we'd be able to fix with routine road projects. Um, it is something that happens in older cities. We definitely have seen this before in the city of St. Louis. Now, MoDOT predicts it could take a few weeks to fix, meaning that Bates Ram could be closed until mid-February. Until then, drivers are asked to detour to Loughborough Avenue and take South Broadway back to Bates. Drivers should plan for extra time on the roads. Tomorrow, MoDOT will discuss details and answer questions about new road projects on Lime Ferry. They will cover the route between Lindbergh and the Merrimack River. The project will update signals and sidewalks and resurface the roadway. Work gets started in mid-2025. You can attend tomorrow's open house meeting from 4 to 6 p.m. That's at Melville High School. How do you want the Rams' $280 million settlement money to be spent in St. Louis? You only have until Friday to weigh in. The Board of Aldermen has a list of ideas you can vote on. Some suggestions include replacing water mains, improving roads, and funding public schools. There's a link to the survey in the As Seen on TV section at KSDK.com. A renovation at Lambert St. Louis International Airport could be a big economic win for St. Louis. Greater St. Louis revealed a potential new project today along with a study that shows how consolidating Lambert into one terminal could bring in nearly $5 billion and 30,000 more jobs by 2032. The project would expand gates, bring in more concessions, triple the parking, even add more flight options. But the idea of change is getting mixed reviews. It's going to be too much traffic. It's, it's going to be bad to consolidate it. I think we'll have to wait to see, but St. Louis is in need of a refresh, so I think it's a good idea. And airport officials hope to reach an agreement with the airline sometime this summer. Tonight, the tax filing season is officially underway. This year, the IRS says it's using tax dollars to make the filing process easier for taxpayers. Our Christine Byers sat down with the IRS commissioner to find out what the agency is doing to streamline the process and how you can spot and protect yourself from scams. When you hear the term IRS, words like convenience and user-friendly don't exactly come to mind. This year, IRS Commissioner Danny Werfel says the agency is using a new influx of cash to change that. Taxpayers should see and feel a difference this filing season versus past filing season. That includes extended weekday and Saturday hours at taxpayer assistance centers. Often people are working and they can't get to us during the week and we want to be accessible. The agency is also going to have pop-up walk-in taxpayer assistance centers. 
people and taxpayers that are more than 100 miles from the closest walk-in center. We want to go to where the taxpayers are. Warful is also pledging to reduce call wait times and offer a callback option if you feel like you're waiting too long. I like to say that the era of listening to elevator music on the IRS phone line can be over if you want. There's going to be changes to IRS.gov, too. They'll now, for example, be able to upload all correspondences and notices back to the IRS digitally rather than on paper. Filing electronically and selecting direct deposit is the best way to get your refund fast, typically within two weeks. And he says the start of tax season also means bad actors come out of the woodwork and they make false promises uh, for tax benefits. They make fake threats uh, on tax penalties. The IRS also lists the most typical scams on its website. And if you're getting an unexpected call from someone claiming to be the IRS, it is almost certainly not the IRS, and you should hang up. Werfel says the cash to make all of these improvements is coming from the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. We're just getting started. Uh, there is uh, tens of billions of dollars uh, that we have. It's all needed. We have significant improvements that we need to make. The IRS has also updated its Where's My Refund online so you can track the status of your refund. To see the commissioner's full interview and how to find the nearest Taxpayer Assistance Center, check out my story in the As Seen on TV section of KSDK.com. Frightening video of a young girl narrowly escaping a would-be kidnapper. The quick thinking that helped her get away. Voters swapping political parties for the primary. Tonight we verify if that's even allowed and what it means for the race for the White House. Sun is out of the forecast for most of Tuesday as a front comes in from the north, but not for the rest of the week. The taste of spring arriving as February starts in St. Louis. Tonight, the Pentagon released the names of the three troops who were killed in Jordan. 46-year-old Sergeant William Rivers, 24-year-old Specialist Kennedy Sanders, and 23-year-old Specialist Brianna Moffitt all died over the weekend in a drone strike. All three are from Georgia and were stationed out of Fort Moore. The attack happened while soldiers slept. More than 30 others were injured. The White House vows it will respond. The President and I will not tolerate attack on U.S. forces and we will take all necessary actions to defend the U.S. and our troops. Iran denies involvement in the attack, but one of the groups it backs, the Islamic resistance in Iraq, claimed responsibility, partly in revenge, it says, for Israeli military actions in Gaza. The Biden administration says it's not looking to escalate the situation, while Republicans are demanding a more forceful response against Iran. The White House is considering pausing or slowing weapon deliveries to Israel. This comes after weeks of President Biden and his national security team failing to convince Israelis' presidents to change tactics in Gaza. So far, no decisions have been made, but NBC sources say Israeli officials continue to ask the Biden administration for more weapons. Two brothers from New York are in custody tonight after a major weapons bust. Investigators found an arsenal of homemade weapons and explosives in their Queens apartment, along with a hit list of politicians and celebrities. They also found multiple notebooks with writings quoting Charles Manson. Law enforcement officials say getting these weapons off the streets saved many lives. New video tonight captures the moment an 11-year-old escaped a would-be kidnapper. You can see a driver make a U-turn pull alongside a girl before he jumps out of the car. The girl, quick thinking, screamed and took off before the man could reach her. <clears throat> this happened on her way to school in Glendale, Arizona. Police say they quickly found the man seen in the video, and tonight he's charged with attempted kidnapping. You may want to think your spring break plans to the Caribbean. Tonight, there's a travel warning for the Bahamas after 18 murders in Nassau this month. The U.S. issued the Level 2 Travel Advisory just after the U.S. Embassy in Nassau posted a security alert. If you're in the area, you're advised to be cautious at night, keep a low profile, and to not resist any robbery attempts. The presidential primaries have just begun, but President Biden basically has a lock on the Democratic nomination. <clears throat> so with the upcoming South Carolina primaries, can Democrats vote 
and play spoiler in the Republican race. Here's Casey Decker with our Verify team. South Carolina is up next on the presidential primary calendar. February 3rd will be the first official primary for the Democratic Party, which President Joe Biden is expected to win easily. And for the Republicans, on February 24th, former President Donald Trump will face his former UN ambassador, Nikki Haley, in her home state, where she was twice elected governor. Given the Democratic primary won't be much of a contest, some people are claiming Democrats in South Carolina might participate in the Republican primary instead. So is that even allowed? Let's verify. Our sources are the South Carolina Election Commission and the Greenville County Election Commission. In South Carolina, when you register to vote, you don't register as a member of a particular party. That means there are no registered Democrats or Republicans. And so you simply pick one party's primary to vote in. It doesn't matter which party you consider yourself to be a member of. And when the next election comes around, you can change which primary you vote in. So we can verify, yes, Democrats can vote in the South Carolina Republican presidential primary and vice versa. But if they do, they can't also vote in the Democratic presidential primary. And which primary you pick will become a matter of public record, though who you voted for will not. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. What would you like for us to verify? Send us an email, verify at ksdk.com. Well, finally, we saw some sunshine today. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell joined us now with that weather first forecast. Apparently, we're not going to see it tomorrow, right, Scott? It looks like we're going to miss out on it tomorrow, but this time it's not going to stick with us for a week or more than a week when the clouds roll back in. So here's your sunset this evening from Staunton. Chris shared that with us on your five on your side. Weather Watchers Facebook group. Sure, it started out rather gray and gloomy this morning, but there was hope that the sun was going to come back and indeed it was in the forecast. Anthony told you about it early this morning and lo and behold around lunchtime the blue sky appeared and there was that sun. How long have we gone without sun? Seven days and 18 hours since the sun set last Sunday evening, not yesterday, last Sunday evening, whole week with no sunshine, starting to feel it. I think most of us were up to our north. We have another little weather system scooting in this time around. The clouds are somewhat limited with it, but that front is nudging its way towards us. And as it does, so clouds are going to increase tonight. Temperatures ahead of the front still well into the 40s behind it. It's not all that cold, but it is a little bit cooler. And so we will see temperatures tomorrow with the clouds back in place, having a hard time getting too warm. So we start out with a few showers before daybreak, perhaps, and then lots of clouds through the day tomorrow. Winds turning to the northwest. Those winds do become gusty at times tomorrow afternoon. That'll add to the chill upper 30s to lower 40s across the region. It'll probably feel like it's in the mid 30s for most of tomorrow. And those clouds, they're just stubborn. They may still be here early on Wednesday. Let's get into the weekend. That'll be the next weather system that really has an impact on us. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday looking pretty good, but by Saturday, rain is lining up out to the west and south of us. Now, as we go into Sunday, that system appears to be sliding by to our south. It's a little early to fine tune it. That would put St. Louis just on the northern fringes of the rain chances. So right now we don't think there's a lot of rain in the forecast for your weekend. A lot of dry time, but certainly the clouds are expected to build back in. We're still at 46 right now. The average high temperature for today is 41 degrees. 56 was our high. We're going to end the month way above average or at least a little bit above average. Considering how cold it was with those sub zero temperatures that we had just two weeks ago, we will be surprised if we end up with temperatures that aren't a little bit above average by the end of next well the end of the month which is the end of this week so by wednesday mm -hmm. and you know sunshine's back so yeah. temperatures are back into the lower 60s thursday and friday a good way to start february yeah yes. right. thanks, thanks scott. scott frank is next with sports mike the blues can't lose on the ice but they did lose a player who's the most serious quarterback and coach in the nfl i'll tell you Plus, you won't believe what a St. Louis guy is doing to help an NBA MVP. This Five on Your Side sports report is sponsored by Tele Tire and Auto Centers, driving your way since 1942. Things you can count on, death, taxes, and the Blues win a game 4-3. You know by now the really good angle. The Blues have won five in a row, and they're in the playoffs as we speak. 
But the fascinating angle is they've won four games in a row by a score of four to three. Now, if they do this tomorrow against Columbus, I'm making pasta for everybody in this studio right now who is Italian. All right, 10 skaters were in an optional workout this morning at Maryland Heights, along with two goaltenders. The mood was light at times, as you might expect for a team riding their hottest stretch in two seasons. They would like nothing better than to take a six-game win streak into the All-Star break, so they expect to have a strong effort tomorrow night against Columbus. I think it's just another chance to, to build our game, uh, keep this streak going. Uh, it's been going good lately, um, and I think uh, one in six in a row going into break will kind of make us feel a lot better than losing the last game before break. So uh, I think everyone will take it as uh, business as usual, and uh, I think we'll have a, a good result tomorrow. Defenseman Scott Perunovic has been cruising during his team's hot streak, but now he will begin the break a couple of days early. He underwent an MRI today after sustaining an upper body injury yesterday in the third period against the Kings. Perunovic has had 10 assists in his last 14 games, but it's unsure how much time he could miss. Tyler Tucker has been called up to fill a spot tomorrow night. So the odds makers think the 49ers and Chiefs are pretty even. San Francisco is a one and a half point favorite as we speak for the Super Bowl. The biggest difference is the quarterback and the coach. Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid are big personalities. They do national commercials for Subway, State Farm, Snickers, and Head and & Shoulders. Then we have the 49ers. Ask yourself this, when is the last time you've seen their head coach, Kyle Shanahan, crack a smile? And their quarterback, Brock Purdy, the last time he grinned, Mopey Dick was a guppy. He appears to be more dour than a mortician. But make no mistakes, the 24-year-old can play when it counts. Before last night, his longest run was 17 yards. He broke off two 21-yarders to help advance the 49ers to Super Bowl 58, which is a rematch of Super Bowl 54. Now, dour time. You know, I wasn't here, obviously, in 19, but from just like you could just tell the guys that have been here, like if anybody, that'd be it'd be special for them to play these guys. So I'm excited to be a part of it. They've been doing it for a while, and um, since since we met them in 19, it seems like they've been there every year since. And we've been trying really hard to get back to that moment. We've been close a number of times, and this time we got it done. And we can spend these two weeks to prepare and make sure it's a hell of a game. Coach, hey, do you remember Drew Hanlon? He was in town this weekend for a fundraiser at his alma mater, Webster Groves High School. Drew became a prolific three-point shooter at Belmont. Then after that, he became a trainer for the stars. Everybody from David Lee to Jason Tatum. He also trains the NBA MVP, Joel Embiid, who scored 70 points last week. And Drew and Embiid actually communicated during that game and others this season. I do all my homework. You know, I, I provide pregame scouting reports, postgame video analysis reports to all my guys, and, uh, you know, we're so close. Really, it's a collective uh, effort to get these guys to where they are. You know, it's, it's the players, obviously, the ones putting in the work and responsible for the results. It's people like myself. I always say that I'm like a GPS system. The players tell me where they want to go, and I tell them how to get there. I just can't picture that during a game, halftime, he's texting with Drew Hanlon, who's in a different state, or at that time, a different country. Plus, he's having an amazing game. He scored yeah, 70 seven. points in the game. What more could he get from Drew? He's yeah. coming, right? what, what, what is your first take on the Super Bowl? 49ers, uh, slight favorites right now. They are, but I tell you, my new policy from, from here on out is never, ever bet against, against Patrick, Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I may be wrong, but I'm never going to do it. All so. right. Frank, thanks. Well, maybe the Super Bowl is in Vegas this year because you'll have to win the jackpot to afford a ticket. The price for the cheapest seat might shock you. This Five on Your Side sports report was sponsored by Telly Tire and Auto Centers. Two airlines are boarding the Swift and Kelsey bandwagon ahead of the Super Bowl. American and United Airlines added flights between Kansas City and Las Vegas to get more fans to the big game. Both added the flight numbers 1989, which is the name of a Taylor Swift album, and United also added flight 2287, a not the Swift song 22 in Kelsey's jersey, number 87. But you either have to be a serious fan or have some serious cash laying around to get into the Super Bowl game in Las Vegas. As of this morning, we checked the cheapest ticket was more than $8,000. That's 51% more than last year. 
StubHub's most expensive ticket, more than $85,000. That is Cusimano money. Yeah. <laughs> That is crazy. And you know, it could be the highest rated game in the history of the Super Bowl, too, because you have the star quality of Mahomes and then a big market like San Francisco. Plus, you throw in the fact that the TV ratings, as we know here yeah. at Five on Your Side, have been off the charts all year long. So right. Maybe the most watched game ever. Yeah, yeah that's wow. possible. And it could be a good game. Oh, yeah. And it might actually be raining here, so you, you know, want to do something inside, right? You've got your <laughs> Super Bowl party. It's not going to be a big storm next weekend, but we are looking at clouds increasing tonight. And we might have a couple of spritzes and sprinkles tomorrow. Temperatures tonight dropping back into the mid to upper 30s. Your next 10 days, look at Thursday and Friday. What a taste of spring. Mm. Even going into the weekend, we're way above average with temperatures in the 50s. Lovely. There you have it. Five on your side at 10. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. Be sure to start your day with today in St. Louis at 4 a.m. Have a great tomorrow.